In this video, I'm going to look at some reactions of the transition elements and we'll be focusing on the reaction equations and any associated colour changes. So in the video, I'm going to be looking at the interconversions between iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus, interconversions between chromium 3 plus and the dichromate 6 ion, reduction of copper 2 plus to copper 1 plus, and the disproportionation of copper 1 plus. Now, just to put your minds at rest, it does say in the specification, students are not expected to remember equations, but construct them from relevant supplied information. For example, electrical potentials, half equations, or oxidation numbers. So the way I'm going to do the video is supply you with those different bits of information, and we'll come up with the equations from that. I hope you like the video. I hope you find it helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, why don't you think about doing that? Okay, then let's get into it now then. So the first one I'm going to look at is the interconversion between iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus, and specifically the oxidation of Fe2 plus by acidified manganate 7 ions, MnO4 minus ions. So we've been supplied with some information, and we've got to use oxidation numbers to construct the equation for the reaction. We don't need to worry about state symbols. So the first thing I'm doing is summarizing that information. So it's basically just saying what we've been told in the information. Um, iron 2 plus has reacted with um, MnO4 minus ions. I'm missing out any reference to H plus ions. That's going to come up a little bit later, um, the way I'm going to show you how to work out this equation. So the Fe2 plus are converted to Fe3 plus ions and the MnO4 minus ions converted to Mn2 plus ions. So because we've got to use the oxidation number method, we're looking at the oxidation numbers of iron and manganese, and hopefully you can see that the iron oxidation number has increased by one. Iron's gone from two plus to three plus. The manganese has decreased by five. It's gone from plus seven to plus two. So a rule with redox reactions is you can't have um, total oxidation number changes being different because that means different numbers of electrons have been involved in the two processes. So basically we've got to get both of those oxidation number changes to total five. So the way we do that is we put fives in front of the iron species. So now the total oxidation number changes match each other. Next thing I'm going to do is balance the charge left and right. And because it's acidified, we're going to use H plus ions to do this. So at the moment, we've got a, an overall charge on the left hand side of 9 plus. So 5 times 2 plus is 10 plus. And then factoring the 1 minus from the MnO4 minus, we'll get 9 plus. The total charge or the overall charge on the right at the moment is 17 plus. 5 times 3 plus 15 plus, plus the 2 plus. So obviously that needs to balance. I'm going to use H plus ions to do that. So to get the overall charge on the left hand side to match the right hand side, we need to put 8 H plus ions in. And then the final thing we need to do is just balance any remaining atoms. So you can see we've introduced hydrogen on the left. There's none of that on the right. We're going to use water, H2O, to balance any remaining atoms. So we need four H2Os, and that's the equation done. So we'll just finish with the associated colour change for that reaction. So an aqueous solution of MnO4 minus ions will be purple. So we're going to go from a purple solution, and we're creating um, aqueous ion, 3 plus ions. So it all depends on the concentration of these but that is a yellow or a pale yellow solution. The chances are this is going to be so dilute, so lacking in concentration, that you're not really going to see that yellow colour. So purple to pale yellow, or you could even go purple to colourless. And the other interconversion involving iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus is this one here, the reduction of iron 3 plus to iron 2 plus by aqueous iodide ions and the supplied information this time is going to be the half equations. So they are going on the screen now. So when you combine half equations together to come up with the overall redox reaction, 
you've got to have the electrons um, disappearing from the overall equation. And they're not going to do that at the moment because we've only got one electron in the reduction half equation, but we've got two in the oxidation half equation. So with the way we sort that out is we multiply out, the in this case, the reduction half equation. We're going to multiply it out by two. That's going to give us two electrons in the equation. Obviously, it's going to put twos in front of the iron three plus and two plus as well. But when we add that to the oxidation half equation, the electrons will cancel because you've got two on each side. So the overall equation looks like that. So hopefully you found that fairly straightforward. All we've got to do now is think about the associated colour changes. Well, we've already seen the Fe3 plus ions, pale yellow solution, and the predominant colour on the right hand side, the product side, is the iodine's brown colour. So we're going to go from pale yellow to brown. Moving on to some interconversion between chromium 3 plus and the dichromate 6 ion now. So the supplied information is electropotential data and we've got to use this information to explain the reactions and colour changes for each stage. So we'll start with stage 1. We're interested in this system here because it's got the dichromate 6 ion. It's also got H plus ions as well which ties in with the acidified bit. And we're interested in this system here because that's got the zinc in it. So this is reacting with the zinc. So if we look at the electropotentials values, you can see that this is plus 1.33 volts. This one's minus 0.76 volts. So all that means is the dichromate 6 ion uh, system is going to move forwards, more positive, um, and the other one's going to go backwards. So you can see that these, these species here are going to react with the zinc, become these species here, and zinc 2+. Plus. And you can see that the electrons don't match. We've got 6 in that one and 2 in that one. So we're going to need to multiply this one by 3 and then add it to that one. So this is the same sort of idea as the, the second method, the one we've just looked at. But the information has been supplied in a, in a different way. So when you do that, there's the overall equation for that stage. We'll do the um, colour changes at the end. So we'll move on to stage 2 now. So you'll notice in the reaction here, we've just generated chromium 3 plus ions, which also feature in um, system 2. So we're now interested in this one. We're still interested in the zinc because it's in excess. So looking at these um, electropotential values, you can see that this one here is more positive. The zinc one's still the most negative. So the, these are going to run in those directions there. And again, we just need to add these together. Electrons need to balance, so we need to double this chromium 3 plus 2 plus 1 uh, before we add it to that one. And we get that. So moving on to colour changes now. So the substances with colour are the dichromate 6 ion, the chromium 3 plus ion, and the chromium 2 plus ion. So the colour changes there are orange to purple, to blue. And the other interconversion involving chromium 3 plus is this one here. So we've got some supplied information and we have got to come up with the two half equations for the two processes and then put them together for the overall redox equation for the reaction. We don't need to worry about state symbols. So we'll start with the chromium system. There's the change there. It's going from CrOH63- to CrO42-. So we're going to start with the oxidation number change in this one. So it's gone from plus 3, it's got up to plus 6. So effectively the chromium's lost 3 electrons, so we put them on the right-hand side there. Now remember this is all in alkaline solution, so we're now going to balance the charges left and right. Uh, but we're going to use OH minus ions, not H plus ions. So the overall charge on the left is 3 minus. Overall charge on the right, 2 minus plus 3 minus 5 minus. So we're going to put two hydroxide ions on the left hand side to give us an overall charge now of 5 minus. And then all we need to do now is use water to balance any remaining atoms. And you can see straight away that we've got hydrogen on the left. We've got eight hydrogens on the left. 
we've got none at all on the right so we're going to need four H2O's so that's that one sorted moving on to the hydrogen peroxide much simpler this one if we put a 2 in front of the OH minus ions we balance all the atoms straight away so that's all we need to do there and now we just need to sort the overall charge out so we've got no charge at the moment on the left but we've got 2 minus on the right so we need 2 electrons on the left hand side now we've got the half equations we just need to get the electrons um, to disappear when we add them together so you can see that we're going to need to multiply the top half equation the chromium 1 by 2 that'll give us 6 electrons in that one so everything in that chromium half equation is going to be doubled the hydrogen peroxide one we need to treble so everything gets multiplied by 3 so there's the overall equation there I'll just quickly explain the hydroxide ions and then I'll come on to the colour although it's pretty obvious what the colour change is going to be so remember we doubled the chromium half equation so this the hydroxide ions will have gone to 4 we trebled the hydrogen peroxide one so they'll have gone to 6 so left over when you cancel down is two hydroxide ions on the right hand side and finally the the obvious color change is going to be from green to yellow because those um, CROH63 minus ions are green surprise surprise and the um, chromate 6 ion CRO42 minus ion is yellow and now moving on to some interconversions involving copper. So we're looking at the reduction of copper 2 plus to copper 1 plus in this slide. So there's our supplied information. Copper 2 plus ions can be reduced to copper 1 plus ions by iodide ions. And there's the unbalanced equation. All we've got to do is balance the equation and we're going to give the associated colour changes or observations for that one. So this is probably the most straightforward one of the lot because all we've got to do is put twos in front of the copper species. So that's going to give us four I's on the right. So we need four in front of the I minus on the left. I will explain the oxidation number change rule. So we've got copper two plus going to copper one plus. So it's been reduced by one, but we've got two moles for the way we've balanced the equation. So the overall decrease in the copper oxidation number is 2 and then if we think about the iodines these are all all four of these are at minus 1 at the start of the reaction we've got two still at minus 1 but we've got two that have changed from uh, minus 1 to 0 in I2 so the overall increase in the iodine is also 2 Moving on to the colour changes, so we're starting with aqueous copper 2 plus ions, so they're going to be blue, so we've got blue solution. Now there's two observations or colour changes we need to talk about here. Copper 1 uh, compounds, so this is solid copper 1 iodide, that's white, and that's because the copper is in the plus 1 oxidation state, so it's got a 3D10 configuration. So when you've got a full 3D um, subshell, there's no colour, so the solid will be white. Um, iodine, we've already seen iodine solution is brown. So we'd have to make both of those um, observations there. Blue solution to white solid and brown solution. And finally, hooray, the disproportionation of copper 1 plus. So our supplied information this time is a statement. Copper 1 plus ions are unstable and spontaneously disproportionate. And we've got some electrical potential information which we're going to use to explain the statement. Okay, so looking at the electrical potential values, you can see the second um, system is more positive, so that will run forwards, the top one will run backwards. Electrons are the same, so we don't need to multiply these out, we'll literally just need to add them together, which gives us that, which we can tidy up to that. And that is the disproportionation of copper 1 plus, because copper has been oxidized it's gone from plus one at the start to plus two in the copper two plus ion but it's also been reduced to the element in the zero oxidation state in terms of observations we've got a copper one plus ion so that will be in solution at the start so that'll be colorless remember we've just done the previous slide 
Copper One Plus ions have a 3D10 configuration. So in the solid state, their compounds will be white, um, but in the solution, they'll be colourless. We've got copper metal, which is a sort of pinky brown um, solid. And we've just also said on the previous one, copper two plus ions are blue. So the observation is going to be a colourless solution to a blue solution and that pink brown solid.